you live the normal age, and what in the world is a normal age? 74, 77 years on earth. When you do the calculus, that's about 30,000 days. You get 30,000 days on earth. So Dr. Kimber, what the hell are you saying? I'm saying time is not running out. But baby girl, your life is. So here's the entrepreneurial question. And for the next 45 minutes, you're going to be in my MBA class. Here is the entrepreneurial question. What are you going to do with the rest of life that you have left? I didn't choose to be here and you didn't choose to be here. The bottom line, you were chosen. You are about to listen to the best of TSP. This is a collection of content from workshops and conferences that we've done over the years because we want to help you grow and expand your business. So do me a favor, lean in, pay attention, and listen now. Let's have a seat because time is running. You've heard me speak before. I've been on you know, all the social media outlets. Let people waste your money, but don't let anybody waste your time. Look, damn it, there's not an individual in here right now. If I gave you one hour to find out how much money is in your possession, you could call your banker, you can call your money manager, you can call your grandmama, you can call your road dogs, your ace boon coon, whoever you got to call. And you can come back in an hour and tell me if, listen, you can tell me at least down to the dollar, if not down to the dime. But there's not an individual in this room who could tell me how much time you have. And if you're like me, you don't want to know. If you live the normal age, and what in the world is a normal age? 74, 77 years on earth. When you do the calculus, that's about 30,000 days. You get 30,000 days on earth. So Dr. Kimber, what the hell are you saying? I'm saying time is not running out. But baby girl, your life is. So here's the entrepreneurial question. And for the next 45 minutes, you're going to be in my MBA class. Here is the entrepreneurial question. What are you going to do with the rest of life that you have left? I didn't choose to be here and you didn't choose to be here. The bottom line, you were chosen. So what the hell does the Bible say? The Bible says complete thy noble task. Do what you were sent here to do. Well, let's get this party started right. I got to take a passage. Well, Y'all got all the books up here, man. Wow. This is taken from my second book, May 13th. It's entitled, Are You Trying to Hustle Me? Get us through your pretty heads, capitalists, and you are a capitalist. Capitalism is not a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. Capitalism means that everything is for sale. You take the Latin root of the word capitalism. First of all, write the word capitalism on a piece of paper. C-A-P-I-T-A-L-I-S-M. Take the Latin derivative of the word capitalism. C-A-P-U-T. Caput. What does it mean in Latin? It means head. What's the one thing you got to use in order to, you know, you know, achieve your goals and objectives? You got to use your head. We don't live in a society that is divided between rich versus poor, black versus white, liberal conservative, Republican Democrat, male versus female, bad, no. But we do live in a society that's divided between dreamer versus non-dreamer. People get in trouble in life not because they want it too much. No, nah, baby girl, you're going to get in trouble in life because you settled for too little. Are you trying to hustle me? One-tenth of the folks run the world, one-tenth of the folks watch and run it, and the other 80% don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, don't be one of them. Charles Clinton Spaulding, super salesman and founder of North Carolina Mutual Insurance Company, was asked what it takes to get to the top. The same thing it takes to succeed in any undertaking, he replied, hard work and determination. But most important, you got to hustle. What in the world is hustle? Hustle is doing something that everyone else is certain cannot be done. Hustle is getting the sale because you got there first or hung on after others gave up. Hustle is burning the midnight oil. It's blood, sweat, and tears. Hustle is missing lunch. Hustle is getting the customer to say yes after he or she said no. Hustle is believing in yourself when no one else will. Hustle is winning and encouraging others to win. Hustle is heaven if you're a hustler and hell 
If you're not, what in the world are you looking at? You're looking at some of my students. Everybody on that campus knows my classroom. Why? Because I got a sign on my door that reads, if you don't want to work hard, you don't belong here. And if you don't want to lead, baby girl under no circumstances walks through my door. Then if you got the guts, if you got the courage, if you got the audacity, if you got the temerity to actually walk in my class, there's another sign on the wall that reads, mediocrity is not the standard in this class. Now you can be mediocre someplace else, but you can't be mediocre here. We gotta move on. Who is that man right there? It's Andrew Carnegie. In 1908, there's a knock on the door of Andrew Carnegie, wealthiest individual in the world. And who walked there? There he is right there, a gentleman on the right, Napoleon Hill. 1908, Napoleon Hill was an undescript, nondescript writer. He was a student at Georgetown University, and he was writing business articles on the side for Bob Taylor magazine. And through some hurt, through some, I guess, you know, I guess point in destiny, the editor set up a one-hour interview with Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie at the time worth 350 million, 1908 dollars. God, just think how much that is today. He lived in a 64-room mansion on Fifth Avenue overlooking Central Park in New York. Napoleon Hill knocks on the door. Carnegie's butler goes down to the door and answers it and escorts him into Andrew Carnegie's study. And the difference that made Andrew Carnegie and Napoleon Hill hit it off is that Napoleon Hill didn't caught up in all the bling bling and excess of Andrew Carnegie. He didn't care how many cars this man had. He didn't care how many rooms in his mansion. The only thing Napoleon Hill wanted to know, entrepreneurs, what is the mindset of this individual to bring all this to bear in his life? And what was scheduled as a one-hour interview, the two of them hit it off. And Andrew Carnegie said to Napoleon Hill, he says, young man, you know, why don't you stay the entire weekend? I mean, you don't have anything on your plate, do you? know? Stay the entire weekend. You know, there's something about you that I like, and we can really talk about economics and success. Well, that one-hour interview transpired over the entire weekend. And Sunday afternoon, it was time for Napoleon Hill to leave. And what did Andrew Carnegie say? He said, you know, young man, I, I like you. And I think that, you know, you and I can do business together. I got a proposition for you. See that, that roll top desk over there? I got a black book. And in that black book, I got all the peak performers. I got all the game changers. I got all the wealth creators in there. I got all their contact information. And what I want to know from you is, if I could set the interviews up for you, would you go ahead and sit down with, uh, you know, Alexander Graham Bell? Would you sit down with Thomas Edison? Would you sit down with Charles Goodyear? Would you sit down with William Wrigley, who owned the Cubs at the time? And listen, ask them the same questions you asked me, and whatever they tell you, put it in a book that will not only benefit this generation, but generations to come. And what Napoleon Hill didn't know, that Andrew Carnegie had a stopwatch behind his back. And it supposedly only took him 11 seconds to say yes. He said yes so fast, Carnegie said, wait a minute, pump the brakes, my brother. Listen, I'm not going to pay you a dime. You know, this book, if you do it right, will create your first fortune. I will reimburse you for any cost, but no one's going to pay you a dime. And I don't care if this process takes two years or 20 years. It took him 20 years. And what was his first book? There it is right there, Law of Success. Well, before he died, Napoleon Hill was working on a black version of his all-time classic, Think and Grow Rich. That book has sold more than 25 million copies. He got 100 pages into the manuscript, died of a stroke. He was 87 years old. And W. Clement Stone held on to those 100 pages for 16 years, the day in which I walked into his office, and he asked me to complete and finish and update the book. And because of readers like you, yes, Think and Grow Rich, a black choice, millions of copies, and the like, and I am so grateful. Now why the hell would I tell you that story? 
to pat myself on the back, my personal aggrandizement, narcissistic, no ego here, boys and girls. No ego here. And what the hell is ego? Ego is any other, any belief other than God. Why would I share that story with you? Because that is the heart of a burning desire. No matter where I go, no matter how many times I'm interviewed, people want to know, Dr. Kimbrough, I mean, what was the one quality all these individuals who you interviewed, and I interviewed them all? Steve Harvey spoke in my class at Smith, you know, at Clark Atlanta University. Michael Bazin spoke in my class. Ayanna Van Zandt, Tavis Smiley spoke in my class to my students. What is the one factor they all had in common? Tyler Perry, who I interviewed, T.D. Jakes. What did they all have in common? They had a burning desire. Now, what is the difference? We all have 50 million desires, man. My wife just got her deck painted. She's going to take her house to the next level. I'm going to go ahead and get this color, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, girl, go do whatever you want to do. We all got different desires, man. <laughs> You might have a desire to get a new outfit, get the new air joint. We all have 50 million desires. That's human nature. That's a part of life, entrepreneurs. But what is the difference between a burning desire? A burning desire, and this is what you need, entrepreneurs. It's an inner candle. It's an inner flame that cannot be extinguished. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Traffic Sales and Profit Show. Hey, do me a favor. If you enjoyed what you heard today, subscribe and follow us on this platform right now to make sure you do not miss a beat as we drop new episodes and additional content every single week. Also, if you'd like to get access to a free paperback copy of my book, access to the TSP Traffic Sales and Profit free Facebook group, our challenges, resources, our events, and more, make sure you visit us at www.trafficsalesandprofit.com forward slash podcast.